Every year, thousands of workers are injured or die as a result of fall-related accidents. Such falls are the leading cause of death in the construction industry. You can greatly minimize your risk with the implementation of a comprehensive fall protection program. This video is intended to provide you with fundamental information regarding fall prevention and protection necessary in developing such a program. A well-written fall protection program consists of various components which must be in place and working together in order to be effective. The program begins with identification of fall hazards through a site survey conducted by a qualified person. It continues with a written plan that details the fall prevention and protection to be used for each hazard, a plan for rescue, and a good understanding by the workers of the OSHA regulations and other applicable standards. The proper selection, use and inspection of the fall protection equipment, and a comprehensive training program for all workers involved should also be a part of the program. In general industry, a fall hazard exists if an employee is exposed to a free fall of four foot or greater. In the construction industry, it is six foot or greater. Once the fall hazard has been identified, there are basically two options available. The hazard needs to be eliminated or a personal fall arrest system needs to be implemented. Although not always feasible, eliminating the hazard is the ideal approach. Common methods of elimination are a guardrail system or total avoidance of the fall hazard altogether through a change in work procedures or by engineering out the hazard. If the fall hazard cannot be eliminated, a personal fall arrest system must be implemented. Once all hazards are identified, a written plan outlining how to deal with each one should be developed. Procedures should be specified on how the hazards are going to be eliminated. If elimination is not possible, procedures should state what personal protective equipment is needed. The selection and use of such equipment, along with inspection and training procedures, should also be documented. The plan must address these fundamental elements and be thoroughly understood by all workers. Before attempting to use any fall protection equipment, all workers must be properly trained in the use, inspection, and maintenance of the equipment. It is the employer's responsibility to select the appropriate safety equipment for each particular fall hazard that exists. In addition, rescue plans must be developed and implemented to ensure a safe, timely rescue in the event of a fall. Personal protective equipment generally falls within four functional categories. Fall arrest, positioning, suspension, and retrieval. A fall arrest system is designed to stop a fall once it has begun. It typically includes the following. Personal protective equipment consisting of a full body harness, a connecting device, typically a shock absorbing lanyard or retractable lifeline, and an anchorage usually an I-beam with tie-off strap or any other compatible object with a 5,000 pound tensile strength. The second category is the personal positioning system. A positioning system holds the worker in place while allowing a hands-free work environment. Activities such as tower work or rebar form construction use positioning systems. There are many types of positioning systems available, but a common one includes a full body harness with side positioning D-rings, a positioning device such as a rebar chain assembly, and an attachment point or anchorage capable of supporting a 5,000 pound load. Depending on the work being performed, repositioning of the system may expose the worker to a fall hazard. This situation requires the use of a personal fall arrest system to be used in conjunction with the positioning system to provide 100% protection. The third category is the personal suspension system. It is used in such activities as building maintenance, painting, or window washing. A personal suspension system is designed to lower and support the worker in a hands-free configuration. This system generally consists of a work positioning chair, a work line, and an anchor board. Most situations require that a personal fall arrest system be used in conjunction with a personal suspension system. The final category of fall protection is retrieval equipment. 
This is typically used in situations where the worker must enter confined spaces such as manholes and mine shafts. A retrieval consists of a full body harness, a retrieval device, for example a three-way recovery system, and an attachment point such as a tripod. As you may have noticed, the full body harness is the core element of your personal protective equipment. A full body harness distributes fall arresting forces throughout the body, reducing chances of injury. Body belts are not recommended for fall arrest in any situation, as the generative forces are concentrated on the abdomen, increasing the likelihood of serious internal injuries. Most regulations governing the use of fall protection prohibit the use of body belts for fall arrest. When selecting a full body harness, the first thing to consider is the type of work being performed. Applications for fall arrest require at minimum a harness with a back D-ring. Positioning applications typically require side or hip D-rings for positioning and a back D-ring for fall arrest. Suspension and retrieval systems may require shoulder Ds and a back fall arrest D-ring. The type of webbing must also be considered. Nylon and polyester are the most common materials used. Certain situations may require a specific type of webbing such as polyester in an acidic environment and Kevlar or Nomex in high heat situations. Buckles are the next consideration. Four styles are commonly available. Friction, tongue buckle and grommet, mating buckles, and quick connect buckles. The type of buckles as well as an accessory option such as padding, lanyard retainers, and tool pouches are available at the request of the customer. In a fall, the forces are distributed by the harness throughout the leg, hip, and shoulder regions. In addition to optimum force distribution, the full body harness keeps the worker suspended upright in a more comfortable position while awaiting rescue. This is due to the sliding back D-ring which travels upwards to behind the head when a fall occurs. Before using any fall protection equipment, the worker must carefully read and understand all instructions and warnings. And, in order to ensure proper protection, the full body harness must be worn correctly. First, hold the harness by the back D-ring and shake to allow any tangled straps to fall into place. Unbuckle any connected straps at this time. Slip the straps over the shoulders. Now, the back D-ring should be positioned in the middle of the back between the shoulder blades. Pass a leg strap between the legs and secure to the opposite end. Repeat this step with the other leg. Connect the waist strap, if so equipped, and fasten the chest strap. All straps should be snug, but not binding to allow for a full range of movement. Secure excess webbing with the keepers provided. Reverse these steps to remove the harness. The connecting device, typically a lanyard or retractable lifeline, is the next critical element in the fall protection system. The connecting device connects the harness back D-ring to the anchorage. Only the back D-ring is to be used for fall arrest. If your harness has other D-rings present, they are for positioning activities or retrieval only and must not be used for fall arrest. The most common connecting device is a lanyard. Lanyards are available in a variety of types, such as steel, rope, and webbing. While all of these will stop a fall, OSHA regulations require that the maximum arresting force while using a full body harness be limited to 1,800 pounds. This is virtually impossible to achieve with a lanyard that does not have a shock absorber. Therefore, as a general rule, when using a lanyard, it is recommended that it be a shock absorbing type. Let's take a look at a fall arrest drop test using a full body harness and a non-shock absorbing web lanyard. In this test, we are subjecting a 220 pound test weight to a free fall of 6 foot. Note the violent impact and bouncing of the test torso. The fall arrest forces measured during the test were in excess of 3,000 pounds, well over the 1,800 pound limit mandated by OSHA. Now let's take a look at the same test incorporating a shock absorbing lanyard. Note the gentle, easy, controlled arrest of the fall.
The fall rest forces measured during this test were under 900 pounds.